Okay, check. Can you hear me? Well, that sounds good. So my name is Pascal Führlich. I'm from the Potsdam Institute for Climate Impact Research, which is right next to Berlin in Germany. Let me begin with a story. So um, this is, I made up the story, but it's not too far from the truth what I uh, had to endure. <laughs> so I had a repo on GitHub um, with CI set up. So CI is for continuous integration, but that doesn't really explain too much um, in this context. Um, we can just say CI is uh, some checks that run on a server whenever you push to your Git repo. So um, the whole thing was working fine for a while and then um, something happened. There was no new commits and um, suddenly the CI checks failed, although the exact same checks uh, still worked locally. And then uh, my workflow was basically this. Uh, while the CI failed, I had to come up with an idea then implement the potential fix. I had no idea if it would work because I, locally it was working anyways. Then I pushed to GitHub and uh, waited 20 minutes and then uh, repeated the whole thing for a couple hours. And um, then I ran out of ideas eventually, added some print statements and uh, yeah, this trial and error approach remind, reminded me a lot of when I was just starting to learn how to program and it was frustrating as hell. And uh, at the end of my workday, this was uh, my commit history. <laughs> you have to read from the bottom up. Um, yeah, and the red cross indicates that the CI check failed every single time. And I eventually gave up. But there's a better way, and I will talk about that now. Um, so this will work on any operating system, so Windows, Mac, and Linux, all the major ones anyways. Um, and I'm assuming you have a repo on GitHub and Git installed. And the motivation, why are we doing this? Um, first question, why uh, is CI testing even uh, worthwhile? Um, as I explained, we, we run checks uh, or tests, um, sometimes deployment uh, scripts on every pull request or push um, to prevent broken projects, which is especially important if you have lots of users uh, or other developers who uh, need the working repo to work with it and um, continue developing. And this also ensures a setup on a fresh machine because every time uh, on the server the GitHub action is run, you will get a clean system uh, where you have to set up everything again. So you, in this way, know if it works when someone new comes and wants to use your, your tool. And you can also use it to, uh, for example, make sure the code quality is uh, fulfilling a certain standard. Um, why should you use GitHub Actions? Um, they are very easy to set up and free. If you're uh, using GitHub already, um, I'll show you later how easy it is to set up. I'll do it live. And um, the problem is, yeah, Actions are essentially code and eventually they will break. And what do we do then? Well, debugging, but that's quite tricky here. Um, by the way, shout out to GitHub uh, for providing an amazing service, uh, not just the repos, but also GitHub Actions. Uh, you can get everything for free, it's, it's just amazing. So why is uh, debugging GitHub Actions tricky? Um, well, the whole thing runs on a server, so you don't have interactive access and can't really play around and see what's really going on there. And as I uh, outlined in the intro, there's of course trial and error, and you can upload tons of commits, wait a long time, um, and then use print debugging, but instead it's way better to use ACT, uh, which is a tool written by Casey Lee and a bunch of contributors, and we'll take a look at that now. So first thing we wanna do is create a repo, and then um, we'll add a GitHub action to it and follow the action running in the browser. We're using R for this example, um, but the same principles work with any language. So I already prepared this, um, this demo repo. We have a single script and um, what it does is it's uh, installing a dependency. Then we have a dummy data frame and just pretend this is some kind of calculation uh, that's running and you want to verify that the correct result uh, 
yeah, comes out of it. And to do so, um, you use the uh, digest uh, package to calculate a checksum. So basically you take the R object and uh, turn it into a string representation, a fingerprint, and then you can um, later, and that's what we're doing here, um, save the string and compare to what the, check, the calculated checksum is. If everything stayed the same, everything's still working, then um, you should be able to uh, compare the two and they should be equal. And that's what we're doing here. The stop if not is just a complicated way of saying assert. So we're just making sure the two are equal. If not, there will be an error. Otherwise, we'll get to the message. Um, there's nothing else in the repo at the moment, um, but we're gonna change that. We will add an action now. Can do so by clicking the action tab. And uh, GitHub makes it really easy. They um, suggest a bunch of um, actions that are already um, available. Um, for example, here uh, it suggests for an R package, but we don't really have an R package. So we can set up a workflow ourselves and uh, this will give us a very basic default template which explains uh, all, the, all the things happening here. So um, first we can give a name, then we can define when the action will run. And here we say um, whenever a push is done onto the main branch, then the thing will run. Or if someone uh, just creates a pull request on the main branch. Um, then later um, here comes the jobs. Um, this is what's actually running. You can have a bunch of them and run them um, in sequence or in parallel and stuff like that. In this case, there's a, only a single one called build and um, it runs on Ubuntu latest. So you can run on a couple different system. GitHub provides some um, runners and uh, you can look up which tools are available on these and what exactly it means if you say Ubuntu latest here. Um, but for now, let's take a look at the steps. So this is, um, well, the individual steps of the whole thing. Uh, the first uh, thing in basically every GitHub action is this checkout action. It just makes sure that the um, repo, so the code is available in the runner. So it clones the repo essentially. And then um, here you can run your script now. In this case, it's just a simple shell script uh, saying hello world. And then below, um, you can also do multi-line um, commands. For our purposes, um, we just wanna run the script. There's uh, the script with the test in it. And we need sudo, uh, so uh, administer, administrator writes basically. Um, because of the dependency installation in the beginning. And then we say rscript script.r. Um, yeah, this will just run the, run the script and we can directly in the browser um, commit th this file. And um, this file is located in .github slash workflows and it's a, a YAML file and GitHub will check for YAML files in this folder and um, recognize if it's a workflow file and then immediately start to run it. So you can see it's running now. Um, shouldn't take too long. And then we can take a look what happened there. And there we go, it failed. And um, now if there would be more than one jobs, then we would see all of them here. We just have build. So let's take a look and let's wait a second. So we can see it's set up a job here. Um, we can take a closer look which operating system actually is this and um, runner image here on this link, you would find a list of all the tools that are available on this runner. Um, but we won't go into too much details here. Then the checkout. Um, clones the repo and then the script runs. Um, so all this is just the installation of the dependency. We can skip that. Here it's done. And then we can see this is the checksum we get and this is the checksum we expected. So they are different um, and we get the error. So let's uh, take a look 
locally, um, we try to reproduce it here uh, by just running the script as well. And here you, you can see the, the checksum is equal and uh, we get all tests passed. So um, that's the basic um, problem setup. Let's switch back to the presentation. Okay. So now we want to um, basically get the environment that, the, um, that is running on the server on our local machine so we can reproduce with the exact same environment. And to do so, uh, we use Docker, which is a virtualization tool we can create a container, which is a virtual system on your uh, system, which could be a different operating system, completely different tools. So it's um, very independent of your uh, usual local system. And uh, then we'll get ACT, um, which is the tool that will just uh, take the workflow file and know what to do what, with it. Um, it will then use Docker to create a container with the correct environment. Um, make sure you get all the files into the container. Um, it will just copy your local files. It will not clone from the server, which is nice because then you can just edit locally and it will immediately go into the container and it will then run the action. Um, there's a bunch of uh, Docker images available. Um, I would suggest you to invest uh, some time and 20 gigabytes to download the full image um, so you are really uh, very close to what, what's running on GitHub because otherwise there will still be differences and you're not really sure is this um, now a, a third system that I have to debug or is it really matching what GitHub is doing so it's not too helpful. After installing Docker you can just get the image with this command. Um, yeah, for installing Docker, you, uh, you can do it on Linux, Windows, and Mac. There's a detailed instruction uh, on the homepage you can check out. And then for, uh, for ACT, here they say you need Docker, um, but we already got that. And then there's a bunch of package managers that uh, allow you to install ACT. Uh, you can just pick one that, that's uh, working for you, or you can even go with the uh, bare bones uh, shell installation. Um, this is a list of the runners uh, that ACT supports. Unfortunately, it's only uh, Ubuntu at the moment, so um, you cannot run Windows and Mac OS um, yeah, locally with this approach. Okay. Once we have done all this, um, we can run the action by calling the act executable. And then we say, uh, as the uh, Ubuntu latest, please use this Docker image that we downloaded earlier. And uh, that's actually doing a couple of things. We'll create the Docker container, it copies the local file. So again, not cloning from the GitHub repo, and then it runs the actions. Once that is done, uh, we can take a look at all the containers that are running at the moment, and then we can get a bash shell into the container and then uh, look around interactively. And that's what we'll do now. So back to the, back to the editor. So let's first uh, run the action. And it says uh, there is no file in the workflow directory. That's right, we just created this uh, in the browser. So we have to pull. And now the file is there and the whole thing is running. So this now um, is basically the same what we just saw, uh, saw on GitHub. So it's setting up everything. Then we got the dependency installation and the checksum is also exactly the same as, as on GitHub. So that's good because we want to uh, debug this now. Um, we can use Docker PS and it should show us we have this one container running at the moment 
and there's a container ID here, and uh, we can copy it to um, put it into this next command, uh, which will open the bash. Um, I noticed you can also uh, tap, um, and it will just suggest um, one of the available Docker images, and if you only got one running, then um, it's probably the right one. So in this case, uh, it just suggests the name. You can put the ID or name here, and this will open a bash into the container. So as you can see, the prompt changed, and uh, we are now root. Um, the path is still the same. Um, it will just copy everything, um, including the, the absolute file path, into here, but it's not, um, yeah, it's not copying the entire system or something, it's really only this folder. Well, you can see we got the, the script here, and um, now we can just run it just as we did uh, locally, and we get the exact same error. And now we could go ahead and uh, use a command line debugger, for example. We're gonna go a simpler way here, just start an interactive R session, and then run the script here. And now we can take a look at all the variables that are defined at the moment, and we got the X, um, if we wanna take a closer look at. And uh, we can see it's a data frame. It's got the two columns um, with the numbers and the letters. So everything looks okay here. But uh, let's compare that to how it looks when we do the exact same thing locally. So this is in a different terminal. We are out of the container again. And we run source R script and look at X. And here we can see um, it's the same content, kind of, but the data type is different. So we got a factor here instead of a character. Um, and this is maybe something that uh, a couple of you have uh, stumbled across. Um, R changed the policy when switching from R3.6 to R4.0 um, that data frames by default um, will, will no longer convert uh, strings to factors, but uh, in this case, I got our version three um, locally, and the whoops, the GitHub action is using R four point two, I think, R four point one. So that's where the problem is coming from. Um, to fix this, we can just um, say explicit explicitly that we want strings as factors equals to true, then it will behave the same in R3 and R4. Um, let's see if it's still uh, running locally. It is in the Docker. Um, if we just run again now, um, it will run on the copy that's in the container, so that's not, not too useful. Instead, we wanna run uh, the action again, like we did the first time it will um, quickly install the dependency and then check again. And now the tests are passing. At this point we can um, add our fix in, into the repo and commit and then push. We're pushing uh, then to the main branch, so uh, on GitHub this will trigger the action running in the browser again or on the GitHub server, rather. Okay, looks good. So, um, let's wrap up. Um, so, GitHub Actions are great, but trial and error debugging is absolutely terrible. So, um, that's why we recreated the server environment locally and ran the action there, which allowed us to solve the problem interactively uh, with a much faster feedback loop. We didn't have to upload to GitHub every time and uh, wait until all the dependencies are installed um, to, get the, uh, to get the feedback. 
And all this is not, not just useful uh, when you're debugging a GitHub action, but also when you, for the first time, add a new GitHub action, then you're also trying a lot of stuff and uh, can make your life so much easier. Okay, let's take a look if the action ran. Here we go. Actions again. And now we can see as a green tick, so we succeeded in uh, fixing this without uh, wasting an entire workday, try and error debugging. All right, that's it already. Um, you can ask me questions in a second or uh, you can write me a mail later. You can also find me on GitHub and uh, you can also find the presentation there. Um, it's hosted uh, via GitHub Pages, which is another excellent tool that I can really recommend. And um, the presentation was created with Reveal.js by ha Hakim uh, Hatab. Um, so check that out if you like the presentation style. And um, if you end up using ACT and like it, consider sponsoring Casey Lee, the author of ACT. Thank you. Okay, so we have uh, just the one question on Slido so far. Um, okay, what kind of problems might you encounter if you use one of the slimmer Docker images rather than the full one? Yeah, that's a good question. So the uh, philosophy there is um, they basically have a minimal image that has, I think, shims for all the major tools. And as soon as you start using R, for example, it will go ahead and download R. Um, I can only speak from my experience from uh, testing in R packages, uh, an R package in a GitHub action. Um, it was not working with any of the uh, smaller images. It, it might work for you, it really depends. I guess for a simple use case that I just showed you, it would be overkill to download the whole image. But um, yeah, in general, I would just recommend not, yeah, not being too uh, what to say? Yeah, you should just download it and then forget about it. <laughs> okay, um, another question. Um, can you set up so your repo is a Docker volume so the changes will be reflected in, in the container and not have to run the entire action again locally? Yeah, exactly. That's what, uh, what I would suggest if you're really uh, having a tough problem and want to do lots of fixes. Alternatively, uh, you can also um, open the, the file in the, in the container using VI or Vim or something, um, but it's probably more comfortable to mount it at that point, yeah. Um, is this on? Cool. Uh, thanks very much for that. Uh, you're gonna save me an awful lot of pain. <laughs> um, so I was wondering, given that you had two different ways of triggering the build, you had using a push and a pull request, how, if it's possible to kind of define how the build is triggered when using ACT. So for example, if a build were triggered using a pull request, you would have extra information associated with that event, such as the pull request number. Yeah. And I, just, yeah. Um, I have to say, I have not uh, done this myself, but uh, when you look at the ACT documentation, there's a whole bunch of um, possibilities you have. You can define when you run the act command which trigger you want to trigger now. So you would probably do the pull request and you can also give additional uh, metadata there um, that you want to test. So check that out. Cool, thanks test. very much. Uh, okay, another question on Slido. Only semi-related, do you know of a good way to test locally or on CI your own GitHub actions that you create if they can be called correctly. Um, I'm not sure if I understand the question. I think that's just what we did, but um, you, you meant something else, right? Um, so I meant if you're creating your own GitHub actions that other people can then reuse in their own workflows. I found, for instance, that it's tricky to write unit tests for that, or not necessarily unit tests, but tests that, you know, whether your code runs correctly or whether other people incorporating it in their workflows will get the result that they expect? Yeah, oh, good question. I have not thought about that yet. Um, we are 
only uh, at the first layer, I guess. This is a layer above, um, so I can't really speak to that, sorry. <laughs> um, another question here. Have you tried uh, MX Schmidt Action Teammate? Uh, no. No idea what that was, sorry. Anyone else has experience with that and can report? Okay, then, sorry. <laughs> Uh, well, I guess if, if no one has any further questions, we can wrap up early and go get coffee. Uh, I'm sure there'll be some available outside. So if we just thank our speakers again, that would be good to you. Thank you.